Hello, I'd like to show you a way of making an icing bag which is very easy and simple and also to tell you the different type of nozzles you'd use in different sizes of bags. For instance, I have this large bag here. It's made of cotton with a nylon lining so the icing slips down. It is um, for large piping work. So for instance, this nozzle, if you were piping cream or buttercream or meringue mix, then you'd use a bag like this. If you're piping shells round the edge of a cake, you'd probably use a nozzle like that with maybe a bag this size or slightly bigger. And then if you're just, for instance, writing happy birthday on a cake, you don't want a lot of icing, and that's a number two nozzle there with a small bag. May I say now that the smaller the bag you use, the less pressure is just on your hands and also, so in the end, it makes it much less hard work. I have here baking parchment. I prefer to use baking parchment rather than greaseproof because greaseproof tends to split after a while. This roll is 12 inches from top to bottom or 30 centimetres. And the way to make an icing bag is to take the bottom right hand point, take it up until you form a triangle, crease it well so it's a nice crease. You, now you can either cut it with a pair of scissors, but what I do is I take either a table knife or a palette knife, hold my hand flat down and just slide the knife along. And there you have a triangle. Then if you want another bag, you cut there and you have another triangle ready to make an icing bag. If, as the paper curls like that, use it that way. Don't try and force it if it doesn't want to, to go. So it's better to use it the way it naturally flows. If you make a mark directly in line with the point, that is where the point of the bag is going to be. So you put a mark there, then on the right hand side you write A, B and C. And this is a guide towards moving the pieces of paper. Place your forefinger on that pencil mark you've just made. Take A and give it a twirl. Keep your finger there so the paper doesn't slip across. It's a cone shape now. Put A on top of B. Put your finger and thumb on the paper, take C around the back until it joins up with the other pieces of paper. Now this is the important thing, you want to have a sharp point on the end, same as that bag has. And to get a sharp point, you put your thumb underneath A, now nothing will happen, you can take your hand away, and I'm, what I'm going to do is to slide my thumb upwards, and as I slide my thumb upwards, it slides against the back paper and you get a nice sharp point. Hold the two pieces of paper, don't let them move. Push A back against them. doesn't matter if they're not all in line. The thing you are looking for is a sharp point there. Turn them down in small folds until it's level with the front of the bag. And then you're ready to start piping. Now, 